Hey folks, it's Dr. Timothy Lineski. I wanted to talk to you today about blood work for rheumatoid arthritis. So when you get evaluated by a rheumatologist for rheumatoid arthritis, there's really two major tests that they're looking for. Uh, one is called a rheumatoid factor. And what we find is the higher your rheumatoid factor is, you may see it as an RF on your blood work, the higher the number is, the more likely it is that you have rheumatoid arthritis. Um, in a lot of labs, the upper level of norm is about 14. So if you have a level that's between 14 and let's say 30, um, the likelihood that that's due to rheumatoid arthritis is pretty low, uh, especially if you're not having any joint swellings uh, or stiffness for more than an hour in the morning. Uh, common causes of a, a low positive rheumatoid factor is uh, really liver disease is the biggest thing. Uh, hepatitis C can cause a low positive rheumatoid factor. Uh, and we see it a lot in uh, other diseases. Um, and But another common one is NASH or fatty liver disease. Uh, the second test that they look for an antibody is called the CCP antibody. Now, this is a very sensitive and specific uh, test for rheumatoid arthritis. So again, if you have a factor or, or a CCP greater than 250, or in most tests, that's the highest level it'll let you let it go. But generally, if you're over 100 with a CCP, the probability that it's something other than rheumatoid arthritis is very, very low. Um, some other blood markers that we look at, um, or whenever you're evaluating, let's say you have rheumatoid arthritis, there's a couple things you need to follow. Number one is your markers of inflammation. The two most common are your ESR, or that's called the SED rate, and the CRP. Now, ESR and CRP correlate with um, disease activity. So if you have big swollen joints or you're feeling bad, and you, usually your markers of inflammation are high. Now, it doesn't always correlate with that, but sometimes it uh, helps you uh, know. As you get treated, hopefully, if your markers are high, they uh, get they improve or they get lower and lower. Um, a couple issues with those uh, blood tests. Number one is uh, obesity actually causes your CRP uh, and your ESR to be mildly elevated. Uh, and that's mo the most common reason that I see in my practice for mildly, mildly elevated uh, markers of inflammation. Now, if you have an infection, um, that could really increase your markers of uh, inflammation too. And it's hard to distinguish sometimes if you have an infection or if it's your arthritis that's uh, causing those markers to be elevated. Um, a couple other blood tests you wanna watch for. Um, if you're taking medicines, your white blood cell count. Generally, if you're on steroids, it can increase that a little bit. Uh, prednisone, Medrol. But if some of your medicines can actually decrease that. Um, mild decreases, we usually don't see many issues with, but once you start getting a white blood cell count, uh, an overall one, less than two, or even if you get under three, um, that's where you need to start talking about your um, your uh, your uh, medications to see if they might be causing your white blood cell count to go down. Uh, there are a couple of diseases where your white, white blood cell count can be down in rheumatoid arthritis, and then you treat it and it gets belt and it gets better. Uh, Felty syndrome, if you want to Google that. Um, in addition, if you look at your hemoglobin, that's the Hg. Um, and the, another marker you can look, look for your anemia is the HCT. So when you're looking at these, um, if they're low, that means you're anemic. It is very common to have anemia of chronic disease when you have rheumatoid arthritis. Basically, if your body's inflamed all the time, there's some difficulty with transportation of iron and uh, the processing of uh, iron getting from your uh, from your gut into your bone marrow and then to your uh, to your red blood cells. Um, as you treat the rheumatoid arthritis, you tend to get that level increased. Uh, interestingly, uh, one one of the uh, drugs 
uh, called IL-6. Right now, there's Actimra and uh, Kevzara. Uh, they actually can increase your uh, hemoglobin by, you know, a half of a number or up to uh, one number. So uh, that's not a reason necessarily that you use those, but just a uh, little education. Um, otherwise, really looking at platelet counts uh, can be helpful. If your platelet counts are very high, like if they're greater than 400, if it's like four to 500, uh, a lot of the time that's a secondary marker of inflammation. Um, and as you get treated, hopefully that gets down. Um, if they're low, uh, that can be due to medications too. Usually our medicines don't reduce the levels less than uh, 100, which is actually 100,000, but when you look at it on your labs, if it's less than 100, uh, there's, there might be something more than just a medication causing that. Uh, most medicines we give will will push your levels down between 100 and 150 or so. Um, you usually don't have any bleeding problems uh, with like spontaneous bleeding until your platelet counts are down you know, really less than 20,000 or, or 200, uh, uh, I'm sorry, or two, uh, 20 uh, on the lab report that you see. Um, otherwise, when you're looking at uh, some other, a little dark in here, if you're looking at some other uh, blood work that you have you know you have to pay attention to your kidney which is the CR level or the uh, filtration level you may you may see a GFR uh, the lower the GFR the worse your kidneys are doing the higher your creatinine the worse your kidneys are doing um, now that marker can be up a little bit more if you're uh, younger or if you have uh, bigger body mass uh, african-american folks tend to have a higher uh, GFR men uh, but um, otherwise you want to look at uh, markers of liver disease because uh, as you know methotrexate that's one of the bigger concerns with it is that uh, it goes through the liver so you're looking at the AST and ALT um, and those markers really if they get above depends on who you listen to but it, once they get above 60 uh, or, or greater than 100, you have to do something. You have to figure out what is the problem. Could it be my methotrexate or my leflunamide? Or could it be something like uh, fatty liver disease? Um, obviously, there's a lot of other issues that you could have, like hepatitis. Uh, but I'm just trying to keep this pretty general for whenever you look at some of your blood work and have a little bit of uh, understanding of what's going on. Um, obviously, there's a lot more, and uh, I'll try to think of some more to tell you, but those are some of the bigger markers. Uh, there are a couple other antibodies that we use for rheumatoid arthritis. One is called a, a 14.33 ADA, uh, and uh, that's a marker that can show up early in rheumatoid arthritis, especially, again, the higher the level, the more likely it is that you're progressing to a, uh, uh, a inflammatory arthritis. Um, it's not uncommon for rheumatoid arthritis patients to also have an, their ANA being positive. Um, about 20 or 25 percent of people, again, it depends on who you read, uh, who have rheumatoid arthritis also can have Sjogren's syndrome. Sh Sjogren's uh, syndrome is whenever you have dry eyes and dry mouth, and you can have some other issues associated with it. Um, so if you have rheumatoid arthritis but you see an ANA, that doesn't necessarily mean that, oh, I also have lupus. Um, that's not necessarily true. So. Um, I think I'll do another video and we'll talk about ANA so you can understand that and all the other numbers uh, after it too called extractable nuclear antigen. So I uh, hope, hope that was helpful. Have a great day.